A few days ago, I decided to watch the classic Steven Spielberg time travel time travel movie, Back to the Future. I'm sure many of you have seen that uh, those uh, trilogy, Back to the Future Part One, Two, and Three. If you haven't seen these films, you gotta check it out. I highly recommend you check out those uh, those movies. They're very entertaining. When I saw these movies for the first time, my favorite was always Part One. Uh, Part 1 is when Marty went to the past in 1950, or I think it was 1955, uh, in the time machine, and he met his parents while they were young in high school. In Part 2, now my favorite, Marty McFly had to travel to the future, to the year 2015, to fix a certain problem. His son was getting involved with street gangs, and the gang was about to commit a crime. His son was about to get arrested. Well, Marty McFly fixed the problem and everything was okay. Problem fixed. Everything was okay. After he fixed the problem and prevented his son from going to jail and getting arrested, before Marty returned back to his time, 1985, he visited one of those vintage stores or nostalgic stores where he purchased an almanac that contained all the sporting events, all the results uh, from the year 1950 to the year 2000, including horse racing, baseball, football, you name it. Marty had a brilliant idea. He was going to take that almanac back with him to the year 1985 to his time. So he can place bets on all the sporting events. Since he had all the results in his hands, he was going to place all the sporting events and make a little money, probably get rich. I think that was his intention, to become rich the easy way. (laughs) That was cool, right? That's so cool to travel in the future. Uh, uh, Go get get the past results. Go get the past results for the Powerball. That's what I would have done. I would have gone to the future and find out what Powerball numbers came out for 1985 and play the Powerball and become a millionaire in two seconds. I would be a millionaire two seconds. Anyway, Doc Brown, Marty's friend, uh, Dr. Brown, um, also known as Doc, played by Christopher Lloyd, Marty's friend, Mr. Killjoy, (laughs) Doc Brown discovered Marty's intentions and told Marty, I didn't invent the time machine for your personal gain, for you to become rich, okay? (laughs) Dr. Brown threw the almanac in the garbage. Biff, the villain in this movie, a total penis head, a freaking creep, douchebag, took the almanac from the garbage, got on the time machine, went back in time to 1955 and gave the almanac to himself, young Biff. Marty and Doc returned to their time. In 1985, they went back to their time. However, when they returned, their reality, their universe has changed. It was a parallel universe. Everything was chaotic. Marty's community and neighborhood Uh, was in a war zone, infected with street gangs. Biff, the jerk, uh, and douchebag became rich and powerful by betting on a horse race because he had the almanac. (laughs) Marty's mother was now married to Biff, the jerk. His mother was now a drunken, slutty whore showing her boobs, and his father, George McFly, was murdered. It was a chaotic universe, all because of a mistake in the past that happened in the past. Marty and Doc Brown have a problem. They are now living in an alternate universe that is not their reality. In order to fix this problem, they had to travel back to the past, 1955, not the future, because the future would be an alternate future. They had to travel back in 1955 to correct the problem by getting their hands on the almanac. They had to travel back to the past to get their hands 
on the Almanac to correct this problem. Marty and Doc succeeded. They did succeed. They did. However, when Marty returned back to his time in 1985, things weren't quite normal. Okay? His father, George McFly, was not a dweeb or a nerd. Biff became the dweeb. The villain of the movie became the dweeb. His father became Mr. Cool, wearing sunglasses, dressed in GQ clothing, looking very slick, and became a successful science fiction novelist. His mother was a foxy lady, wearing like a Armani outfit, a beautiful, classy uh, outfit. The apartment was modernized. It was beautiful. The apartment was gorgeous. Everything looked better um, in his uh, original reality. Everything looked better. This was a new, better universe than the reality where he came from. Even his original rea uh, reality back in 1985. This was a new 1985. And he loved it. He absolutely loved it. Now... <laughs> How does this movie, Back to the Future, relates to me and America? Folks, the moral of this movie after watching it again is simply this. The mistakes we commit in the past can lead to drastic consequences. I'm going to repeat that again. The mistakes that we commit in the past leads to to a drastic consequence, two drastic consequences, okay? You see, we did something in the past that affected the future and the present day that we live in today here in America. Now, what has America done in the past that we are now living in this chaotic, out-of-control health problems, which is getting worse and worse. As a result, more than half of Americans are sick with at least one chronic disease. How do we get this way? How the heck do we get this way? A better question, a better question would be, how do we fix this problem? What is the solution? The answer is so simple, folks. It is so simple. Go back to the past and correct the problem. I know many of you are going to say, forget the past. The past is the past, right? Don't dwell on the past. Oh, no. Occasionally, you have to refer back to the past to correct a problem. Here is a perfect example. This is the perfect example. You got to ask critical thinking questions. You got to ask did my ancestors suffer all of these diseases that I have today? I had 14 diseases, okay? How did our ancestors prevent diseases? Because they didn't have all these diseases that we have today. So how did my ancestors prevent these diseases? What did our ancestors do to prevent these diseases? A better question, folks, is what didn't our ancestors do that we're doing today in our generation? What are we doing today that they didn't do in the past? Is there something we are doing today that our ancestors did not do in their generation? For instance, did our ancestors consume genetically modified food products created in a lab? Did our ancestors spray crops with pesticides, herbicide, and Roundup chemicals, etc., etc.? Did our ancestors consume carbonated drinks like soda or pop, sparkling water, and all that jazz? Did they add oil? to their salads, or cooked with oil? Did they stir-fry their veggies, 
or did they consume it raw? Hmm? Okay. Did they eat meats, uh, meat products injected with bovine growth hormones and antibiotics? Did their meat products contain sodium nitrates and sodium nitrites? These are questions you got to ask, folks. Did your ancestors take an aspirin when they had some kind of ailment? Or did they use other remedies for their ailments? Hmm? You see, folks, I had to travel to the past with my time machine. My time machine is my laptop, my phone, my mobile phone. Those are my time machines. Okay, I went back to the past to fix my problem. My problem was 14 diseases, actually 15 diseases. As a result, my present future has changed for the better just by traveling back to the past and studying the past. Now that I am practically disease free, I have one more disease to go. I'm back in the workforce with a better job, making more money, with less hours and less duties. I have not gotten sick in two years without a single ailment like respiratory problems, you can't breathe, uh, blood sugar problems, cancer, and so forth. Now that I have returned from the past, I'm back from the past. I'm telling you, in the present, you need to go back to the past and correct your problem.